All right, we're rocking the DraftKings polo. That can only mean one thing, and that does not mean I'm playing golf today. It's a pay-per-view week. Good day to you from South Florida, USA. I'm John Anik. Appreciate you being with us for what is episode six of Anecdotes, UFC 269 edition presented by DraftKings. As usual, the UFC is blowing it out this Saturday night. It's our final pay-per-view of the year. No fewer than two UFC titles are on the line in Vegas. T-Mobile Arena, we got fans, masks optional. Actually, when I went to the Pac-12 championship game at Alliance Stadium last week, uh, masks were required, which is not the case in Florida and Georgia. But that is neither here nor there. UFC 269 live at T-Mobile Arena on Saturday night. And we will get into some numbers on the main event coming up here shortly in main event mathematics. I was the one who came up with that title for the segment. I don't do any math homework. I married a math teacher so that I would never have to do math homework for the rest of my life. So main event mathematics is essentially the only math I do in 2021. It's the only reason we got married. I was like, you're a math teacher, got down on one knee, rest is history. Like we weren't even in love. I just didn't want to do math homework anymore. Of course, I'm kidding. We were madly in love when we uh, got married in 2011. She's probably not madly in love with me any longer, 10 years in. Um, but main event mathematics coming up in a little bit. We will also get to your UFC 269 related questions in our Q&A segment. Uh, some NFL stuff on the back end of the show uh, and perhaps our best segment, rip up your tickets. What tickets did I rip up this past week? As in what bets did I lose? And when you bet with the type of sort of reckless volume that I do, there's always going to be some losers. There might be a college football Saturday in which I'm on 15 games. And if I could hone it in and bet on four to five, I'd probably do a little bit better. But that is coming up in Rip Up Your Tickets. So let us get into some numbers here. Dateline Las Vegas, UFC 269, Oliveira versus Poirier. And the main event, fairly close on paper right now. Live odds here early during fight week on DraftKings Sportsbook. Charles Oliveira, the undisputed UFC lightweight champion. The underdog here, plus 135. Poirier favored, minus 155. On the total front, over one and a half rounds, juice to minus 185. The under one and a half rounds can be had at plus 150. And of course, as you know, you will be able to bet over under two and a half, three and a half, and four and a half rounds before the end of the week on DraftKings. They will have knockout props, submission props. And I think that is going to be the way a lot of bettors attack the board when it comes to Charles Oliveira and Dustin Poirier. Now, a lot of people that I have talked to, fighters and coaches, do see value on Dustin in that minus 165 range. But given the finishing frequency of these two athletes, I think a lot of people are going to wait for some of those propositions. To that end, 15 of Charles Oliveira's last 16 fights have ended inside the distance. I'm certainly expecting a finish here. Uh, if not, these guys are going to be pretty sore on Sunday morning. So Poirier, 28 professional wins. He's had some wars that have gone the distance, but 21 of those wins are finishes and 13 are in round one. And then on the other side, as some of you know, in Charles Oliveira, we're not just talking about the most decorated submission artist in UFC history. He is the most prolific fight finisher in UFC history. I think that's lost on some people. Charles Oliveira is going into the UFC Hall of Fame, whether he defends this belt this weekend or not. He's won nine fights in a row. Only one of them was by decision. And his finishing rate is north of 90%. In a pro career that dates to 2007, he's finished 28 of his 31 professional wins. So certainly we know about Poirier's durability. Charles Oliveira was asked this week by ESPN, you know, what are your thoughts on if this fight goes the distance? Would you like to see a fourth or fifth round? And absolutely not, he said. So I do expect to finish. Um, this matchup adds up to a finish. Of course, we'll see how it plays out on Saturday night. But everybody's excited because this main event matchup is absolutely fire on paper. And it's on and popping this weekend at UFC 269. The only thing I can guarantee you, fists are going to fly. And that is great for you because new DraftKings Sportsbook customers can bet just $1 and win $100 in free bets if either fighter lands a singular punch. That's all it takes. One jab, a cross, a hook, an uppercut, a haymaker. One hammer fist is all you need. Lightweight title fight, of course, scheduled for five rounds. Would be something if it ended with an early Oliveira finish, right? Like a flying armbar submission and nobody throws a singular punch or lands one, I should say. Not going to happen. I'm guaranteeing it. Bet $1 on this no-brainer. You win $100 in free bets. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. I can guarantee you that. And best of all, you can deposit it and withdraw your cash whenever you want. So all you need to do, if you're a new customer, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app to your phone or device right now. Use the promo code ANIK, A-N-I-K. Throw $1 down on the UFC 269 main event and win $100 in free bets if either Oliveira or Poirier land a punch. That's code ANIC this Saturday at DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of UFC. Must be 21 or older, new customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sports for see DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All 
All right. Time now for Q&Anic. Again, great questions from the listenership here this week on social media at John underscore Anik. Our producer is Cody Merrow, and he is going to fire away for laying your best entries to me here in Q&Anic. Cody Merrow, good day to you, my friend. What do you have? John sitting atop the AFC East. Nate Hill 0622 asks, if Dustin wins, do you think he retires? Yeah, a lot of people here on a Tuesday morning uh, are throwing venom the way of the New England Patriots and Bill Belichick after a great win over the Buffalo Bills on Monday night. All right, Nate Hill. So if Dustin wins, do I think he retires? I don't. Now, this would complete his mission in a lot of respects. He is still hell-bent on retiring at one point in time with that undisputed title on the mantle. You know, he felt like the interim title was sort of a piece of the belt, but not the whole thing. Uh, And I take him at his word. So were he to check that box, I can understand why you would think plenty of money in the bank just walk away. There are so many big paydays that await Dustin Poirier. So I think win or lose, you're going to see him five or six more times uh, inside the octagon. Maybe five or six is ambitious, but certainly three more fights I would go over uh, for Dustin Poirier. My man, Austin Collette wrote, what's next for Poirier if he loses a Saturday? Would he ever get another title shot? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I would be that dismissive with my language to suggest that if Dustin Poirier loses to Charles Oliveira, that he wouldn't get another shot at the undisputed title. It's not as though Dustin has had all these cracks at it, right? Certainly had the opportunity against Khabib, which he earned by beating Max Holloway. Um, But it's not as though he's one of these guys who has had three, four, five shots at the undisputed title. Um, And certainly he's elite enough to lose to Charles Oliveira and work his way back into a championship situation. So I think it will be tough in some respects because you have Islam Makhachev and Benil Daryush and Justin Gaethje and other people lurking. Um, But Poirier is just wicked relevant here in 2021, given the two wins over Conor McGregor, um, just given his star power right now. So um, I don't know. I don't think a loss hurts Dustin Poirier too, too much, at least in terms of his chances to get back uh, to the top of the heap. Our guy Joe from Bayonne wants to know, in your opinion, are people sleeping on Charles Charles Oliveira heading into Saturday? Absolutely, people are sleeping on Charles Oliveira. Now, I've told you guys before here on Anecdotes, oftentimes when I look at a fight, Charles Oliveira versus Dustin Poirier, before I go to DraftKings Sportsbook, I will predict what I think the line is going to be. And I had Dustin in the minus 130 range, Charles Oliveira plus 110. I thought Charles would be the underdog. I did not think it would be this pronounced. And as I sit here talking to you guys during the week, I probably pulled about a dozen or so fighters and coaches. All 12 of them are picking Dustin Poirier. And I think in some way that is a recency bias. Charles Oliveira hasn't fought since May, and he did get touched up a little bit in that fight against Michael Chandler. I do feel like a guy in Charles Oliveira who has sort of been criminally underappreciated throughout not throughout, but at times during his UFC career. Yeah, I don't think he's uh, he's getting the respect that he deserves. I would I would even go so far as to say he's a live underdog uh, if you can get him in that plus 140 range. What else you got, Cody? Alex Weber MMA tweeted, with a win at UFC 269, does Dustin lock up fighter of the year accolades for 2021? That's a good question. So, um, all right, so he beat. Conor McGregor in January, and then he beat him again. So this would be 3-0 and in an undisputed championship. So certainly he would be my front runner. Um, but Kamar Usman beat Gilbert Burns, Jorge Masvidal, and Colby Covington. So he already has three successful title defenses. Rose Namajunas, 2-0 and against Zhang Wei Li in 2021. The action man Chris Curtis may only be 2-0 and in the UFC after a big win over Brendan Allen last weekend, but he's 6-0 in 2021, so he's certainly going to get a nomination from me. Um, and then the two new champions that sort of jump off the page for me, Glover Teixeira and Brandon Moreno. They don't have a whole lot of wins this year. I think they might, they both might be 1-0 and this year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but I think Glover Teixeira and Brandon Moreno are going to get some, some consideration as well. But lock up no. Is Dustin Poirier the front runner for 2021 Fighter of the Year with a win over Charles Oliveira? I would say unequivocally, yes. John Nugzavile says, how proud of yourself when you came up with anecdotes? That's pretty funny. So um, I don't know if I can take full credit. I will say I wrote the back page column for my college newspaper, the Gettysburg at Gettysburg College in Pennsylvania. And my back page column was called Anecdotes. And I wrote it for two years running. So, yeah, I mean, I guess I did come up with that as a working title back then. Um, But it was Cody, our executive producer, who suggested that we run it back when we were doing this monthly segment for pay-per-views with DraftKings. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a pretty cool play on words. And uh, Cody, though, is probably the guy who deserves credit for uh, 
for bringing it back to the surface, if I'm being honest. Well, thank you, John. Hey, man. I mean, you're right here, right? It's like I can't just take credit with you sitting right there on the other side of the glass. What else you got? Twitter's own The Banes MMA reached out and said, Kai Kara France at Dog Odds sounds enticing given Cody Garbrandt's lackluster performance at 135 and durability in question with cutting an extra 10 pounds. How does yeah. this go for him? Yeah, I mean, I can understand why people would have pause going to the window to bet on Cody Garbrandt right now before seeing him on the scale as a flyweight. Now, I will say for Cody Garbrandt, he doesn't have the biggest frame in the world, and the cuts down to 135 pounds weren't as bad for him as they are for some other bantamweights. So I think time will tell. Obviously, TJ Dillashaw is the one guy that we saw High profile guy should say go from 35 down to 25. Howley and Piva is another guy who fights this weekend who has waffled between those two weight classes. But obviously, TJ Dillashaw, there's an asterisk, right? Because when he went down, um, he was later charged with uh, with cheating to the nth degree. So I would wait until the scale. Um, but certainly, I can understand why people who don't want to wait can see value on the Kai Kara front side. John, a yes or no question from Shog. Will Pena last even one round against Amanda? Yeah, I think she will. I think Juliana Pena will be able to uh, to extend Amanda Nunes a little bit. You know, one thing that's always in my head is this fight in Kansas City that happened several years ago between Valentina Shevchenko and Juliana Pena. Because we felt like we were sort of hunkering down for an absolute war in the main event, and then that fight was very, was over very quickly. But Juliana Pena is the consummate dog. I've seen training footage of her from Rick Little in which she is just mauling men, you know, so she's game. She's one of the meanest women on the roster. She's supremely skilled. Um, but I do think she needs to make this a really ugly fight, dirty boxing, clinch situations, get the fight to the ground as soon as humanly possible. Um, and I think if she can at least make it dirty early, um, she can extend this fight. And as Joe Osborne pointed out on the Anakin Florian podcast this week, you know, Amanda Nunes has kind of been, you know, either go the full distance or have a very quick fight, you know, so that pair is watching. Not that Amanda Nunes plays with her food per se, but in the Felicia Spencer fight, for example, she's not going to force the issue and make a mistake. If there's an opening for a finish, she's going to take full advantage. But if Pena doesn't make a mistake, Amanda Nunes isn't going to make her own mistake trying to force a finish. Utai Boho asks, have you ever been to Brazil for vacation? What is different from the U.S. and what do they share? Do you have any crazy stories and have you ever tried ayahuasca? Ayahuasca. You know our producer who was born in the 90s knows how to pronounce ayahuasca. Let me start with ayahuasca. Yeah, I'm curious. I've never done it, but certainly I'm curious. I just don't know that it's the best time in my life to be doing it uh, because I think there's sort of some front, front end commitment in terms of cleansing your body and then you don't know how it's going to affect your body. But um, I do hope at some point to get the chance to uh, to go away and, and really try uh, ayahuasca because it certainly piques my curiosity. I've been in Brazil 27 times, never for vacation I have gotten to to do some things recreationally in Brazil, but really haven't been able to experience that country as a true tourist or vacationer. Um, one thing that is different from Brazil and the U.S., and I know there are places like Venice that do have gyms on the beach, but everywhere you go in Brazil, there's workout equipment right there on the beach. Like, you want to feel like a real piece of shit? Go to Brazil, right? Those guys are exercising all the time. You know, even people that are huge over there are working out super hard five to seven days a week. So it's always an inspiration for me when I'm running on the beach in Rio de Janeiro and I see everybody lifting weights there on the beach. Uh, and the last thing I would say, the only crazy, crazy story I have, <clears throat> and I wish my man Kenny Florian was here to sort of corroborate this, but Kenny and I were leaving dinner one night and we were walking down the street in Brazil and this car veers off the side of the road, coming right up on us. We were scared in the moment because we didn't know what was going on. It looked as though they were maybe trying to hit us or something. And these two beautiful women get out of the car to take a picture with me, right? Now, I'm here with Ken Flo, who three times has challenged for the UFC championship. Nobody knows who the hell John Anik is in Brazil, except for these two gorgeous women who saw me somehow on the side of the road, pulled over to the side of the road and wanted to take a picture with me. If you don't believe the veracity of this story, at Kenny Florian on Twitter, and uh, maybe he will corroborate it for me. But uh, needless to say, I was on cloud, cloud nine the rest of, uh, of the night, despite the fact that I did not get their uh, cellular telephone numbers. What else you got, Cody? Bomgia John Anik, back to the odds with Zoltan, New York. 
If he defends his title, it will be the seventh underdog UFC ticket you can cash with Charles, Charles Oliveira's name on it. Is there any more live underdog on this card than the champ? Five more sleeps. Five more sleeps. And I think we're down to four right now as of this taping. So, all right. So Charles Oliveira has already cashed six times as an underdog in the UFC. That is something I did not know. Three underdogs for you that are not getting nearly enough respect, in my humble opinion, going into UFC 269. Tony Kelly plus 160 against the taunt mask guy, Randy Costa. I felt like that line would be a little bit closer. Derek Minner is plus 180 against Ryan Hall. I think Derek Minner deserves better from the betting public and the odds makers there. And the Beverly Hills Ninja, Jordan Wright, is an outstanding striker. He's a whopping plus 280 underdog against Bruno Silva. Bruno Silva's the man, but I don't know that Jordan Wright deserves to be as high as plus 280. We'll see how it plays out this weekend. All right, anything else, Cody, before we move on? The final question from Degenerate U. How does Jeff Neal's recent DWI arrest impact his fight? Is Kai Kara France versus Cody Garbrandt a number one contender's fight? Degenerate U. We like the Twitter handle. All right, first I will answer the second question. Is Kai Kara France versus Cody Garbrandt a number one contender fight? I think it could go a number of different ways. If Kai Kara France finishes Cody Garbrandt, I think that could fast track him. Certainly, I don't have to tell most of you if Cody Garbrandt is able to knock out Kai Kara France, the wheels are going to be in motion for him to get a championship opportunity. Oftentimes, when a guy moves down, a former champion, high profile guy, even our guy Ken Flo, when he moved down to featherweight, felt like all he was going to need to do back in 2011 was beat Diego Nunez, and he was going to get the title fight against Jose Aldo. That's exactly what happened. So I could see a flyweight championship contender emerging out of this fight. Of course, you have Davison Figueredo, <clears throat> who will get another crack at the belt that he lost coming up in January. You have other high-ranked guys, Askar Askarov and Alessandre Pantoja, that are on winning streaks that haven't challenged for the belt. So there are guys ranked above Cara France and certainly Garbrandt, who hasn't competed in the weight class. Manel Kopp is lurking after another big knockout win. Um, so flyweight's in a good spot right now, perhaps as good as ever since the Demetrius Johnson days at least. Um, but I do think with Askarov and Pantoja, Pantoja, um, I don't think you can call this a true eliminator. And as far as Jeff Neal's recent DWI arrest impacting his fight, so it happened on Thanksgiving night, so he has had some time removed. All I can tell you about my conversations with the Fortis MMA head coach, Saif Saud, is that Jeff Neal's ready to go. He's had an outstanding training camp. This is not a guy who has been drinking alcohol throughout training camp. I think this one night he consumed something, and they seem to believe it was a low amount, and when the blood tests come back, um, anything that was unlawful about the weapons charge is going to go away because his blood alcohol limit will be below like .08 or something. So I don't know. If you're Santiago Ponzinibbio, I think this could be something that certainly you are buoyed by, right? You're sort of wondering aloud, what is this guy doing, you know? Um, but it's a pick em right, pick em fight right now, minus 110 on both sides, according to DraftKings Sportsbook. And if Jeff Neal does lose this Saturday night, I don't think it's going to be um, because of his recreational decisions uh, the night before Thanksgiving. Unfortunate headline, nonetheless. All right, hashtag anecdotes if you want to get in on QAnonic in advance of UFC 270 next month. All right, rip up your tickets as I bring to the masses some of my losers from last week all right so first touchdown score on sunday night and monday night football one in 15 on the year after we lost on josh allen at nine to one on monday night football we're up from zero and 11 though but one in 15 on the year in terms of first touchdown score proposition bets um it's got to stop betting on the on the Miami Heat. I have lost, I think, $400 on the Miami Heat over the last two weeks. Otherwise, I'm, I'm betting the NBA pretty well. Uh, I did have a stretch of five straight losing bets in the NHL. Uh, so I was really reading the puck stuff well around Thanksgiving time, let me tell you. Uh, and, of course, you know I ripped up a ticket on the Buffalo Bills. Minus two and a half on Monday Night Football against the Pats. But we are happy to rip that one up if, uh, if you know what I mean. All right, Annex Action, as we look ahead to my action this week, NFL Week 14. So anyone who bets this league knows how hard it is and how challenging it is to realize success on a week-to-week -week basis. The, week, the league changes so much week-to-week, -week, and maybe this is just a classic case of me sort of reacting too much. Um, but I do think momentum can matter. I expect the Steelers out of Pittsburgh to be competitive on the short week at Minnesota. You guys know Minneapolis historically, very hard place to play. The Vikings 3-2 and two at home this year. But the Vikings, they just lost to the Lions. 
huge swing game for their season now to be five and seven instead of six and six. And that swing happened on the last play of the game. Adam Thielen, Dalvin Cook, both not practicing early here during what is a very short week, obviously, to begin with. Pittsburgh six, five and one for them. Huge game for their playoff hopes. They're getting three points on the road. I will take the fighting Mike Tomlins plus three on Thursday night football. And then some other early uh, week 14 NFL plays for you. I'm rolling with Mike Vrabel and the Tennessee Titans off of their bye week minus nine or nine and a half against the Jacksonville Jaguars and the New York Jets. I will take plus six home against the New Orleans Saints. I will also be on the Atlanta Falcons almost assuredly if Cam Newton is starting for the Panthers. Matt Rule fired his offensive coordinator this week. And I did read that he is leaning towards starting Cam Newton once again. If he does, my Newton fade continues. I have been fading Newton with good success over his first couple starts since returning to Carolina. So I like the Falcons and I like the board here uh, coming up in week 14. All right, you can follow DraftKings on social media at DraftKings on all channels. For the DraftKings Sportsbook, it is at DK Sportsbook on Twitter. And on Instagram, it is at DraftKings underscore Sportsbook. A lot of UFC 269 coverage from DraftKings coming up this week as well. I'll have my fast finish odds boot boost up in the DraftKings Sportsbook probably in the next 48 hours or so. A lot of baked in value there, so certainly worth considering if indeed you are the parlaying type. And of course, we look forward to seeing you all live on pay-per-view. It's a big one. Saturday, December 11th, UFC 269. Oliveira versus Poirier from T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Thanks to our producer, Cody Merrow, and everybody at DraftKings. With that, I'm John Anik saying so long for now. Thank you for watching Anecdotes presented by DraftKings. We will see you next month live from Anaheim, California in advance of UFC 270. Until then, happy holidays. Be safe out there. Don't text and drive. You'll make it.